Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for the main slate on Wednesday, June 12th. We're here breaking it down. We have a pretty solid size slate still, so it should be a fun one. Now, before we get into it, I want to bring up the fact that we do have a free seven-day trial through the app stores. You can go through the Android or iOS apps and it'll give you seven days free if you have never tried Nine Star before. So make sure only to do it or try it if you have tried uh, if you haven't tried us out now that will give you access to the website to the apps to all the dfs all the prop stuff you get it all for free for seven days then you can just stay on with us for 39.99 per month now let's uh get into the slate we are going to go over the perfect lineups on fanduel and DraftKings, the winning lineups and with that being said i gotta shout out our boy soccer geek who last night had a 20k takedown in the uh what was it the mlb 100k ball four four entry max contest he took down 20k congrats to him i love to see it and let's get into these uh perfect lineups And we'll start on FanDuel. So we got Ronel Blanco. We got uh, Will Smith. Two-man, good old Rocky stack. And Otani and Will Smith. So 2-2 uh, two, two and some one-offs. And then the winning lineup on FanDuel went to B. Smith 85, who had Kikuki. Kikuchi. Kikuki. <laughs> uh, they had a four-man Dodger stack and a four-man Arizona stack. Got it done. Congrats to them. It was a uh, real late push with their bats. Really, the Dodgers just went absolute nuts. Just had four home runs in one inning. A bunch of different guys getting home runs and uh, just big scores from them. Then Arizona obviously had a huge game with nine runs, but it was really uh Grichek that got it done he was 10 percent owned pulled around you know pulled up a uh, value 2300 perdomo and 2700 suarez just pulled those guys along corbin carroll obviously did good five percent owned hitting the very very end of the lineup just wild to see how much he has fallen off from last year to this year but congrats to b smith you got it done. Now on to fan or DraftKings. We got Miles Mikolas, Ronel Blanco. Mikolas had a no hitter going into the sixth or seventh inning, uh, so he just had a great game. Had strikeout stuff, which he normally doesn't either. And then we have a, a three man Dodger stack and one offs from there. First, let's look at Soccer Geeks lineup. He had Diaz and Skeens as his pitcher, and Diaz did nothing, but he was only 4K, so he didn't kill him only getting eight here. And then he had a 4-4. Looks like uh, four Dodgers, four Arizona. Uh, congrats to him. He got it done. I love to see it. And then the winning lineup in the bigger contest, 50K to first, also was Diaz, was Paul Skeen. And then they had a five-man Dodger stack and three one-offs. He got uh, with, uh, yeah. So he had Grichik, he had McMahon, he had Stanton. All uh, all got it done. So congrats to him. They won by twelve, which is pretty wild. Pretty uh, pretty big edge right there from uh, first to second. Also, it's a good thing to point out here that. In the bigger contest, you needed 222 points, whereas the small contest, uh, Soccer Geek won with 198. Just way less entries into this contest. Thus, uh, lower score was needed. 198 would have been eighth place in this contest. So, now uh, let's get into the slate. So, we got eight games today. The uh, one with the best hitting weather and an over-under that is like Coors is the game in Kansas City. Yankees versus Royals. It uh, looks like definitely the clearly top game for hitting. Now let's get into the pitchers. So our highest owned pitcher, Nick Lodolo, 9K. Uh, frankly, I don't 
think I agree with this ownership, and I would expect it to change big time throughout the day because it just doesn't make that much sense to me. He doesn't have huge upside. Oh, sorry. 28% K rate over the last 20. It's over the short term that he hasn't had the upside with only 21% upside. But FIP-wise, low fours, uh, allows a ton of fly balls, moderate amount of hard contact. He's in uh, Kansas City, Great American Small Park, where he's averaging almost 39% less fantasy points away. And versus a very good offense in Cleveland that just continually gets it done. 326 Woba. If you look at the short term, 364 Woba, 211 ISO. It is a solid offense that I really don't like to attack, especially when a pitcher is high owned. Our projection is only 1.7x. Kind of surprised that uh, he's going this high owned. Uh, the consensus they have you know, a little bit higher there, but, uh, not too much, not too much higher, not substantially higher. Next, we got Sonny Gray, who is clearly the most, uh, veteran and, you know, best pitcher on the slate. And I don't mind him. The, uh, Pirates, not great versus righty strike out 23%, 300 Woba, 129 ISO. They haven't been good versus Sonny Gray. 69 plate attempts, only hitting 227 or 224 with a 27% K rate. He's allowed two home runs, but that's 69 uh, plate attempts. You know, that's over two games of plate attempts and has only allowed two home runs. So totally fine going here. His FIP over the last five is 2.76. 4.5 ERA over that span, but a 34% K rate. So big time upside. And that FIP being so much better than ERA does show me that he has been pitching fairly well. I am absolutely on board with uh, Sonny Gray. Definitely going to have some of him. Don't mind the spot whatsoever. Next, we got Bryce Miller. Now, the thing about Bryce Miller that is so wild to me, his home and away splits. So he had one good game away. Outside of that, Texas got shelled. Houston got shelled. Baltimore got shelled. Yankees got shelled. KC got shelled. Meanwhile, his home starts have almost all been great. Cubs did well, 6.1 innings, 4 earned, or uh, four Ks. Cincinnati, 6 innings, 7 Ks, 1 earned run. Atlanta, 7 innings, 10 Ks. Oakland, 6 innings, 9 K, 2 earned runs, but still solid. Uh, Houston at home, six innings, six Ks, two earned run, and Angels, six Ks, or six innings, nine Ks. He is averaging 56.5% more fantasy points at home during his start. He has a great matchup versus the White Sox, who just aren't very good. Um, so I am intrigued. The, the data, though, 4.24 over the last 20 uh, 4.83 FIP over the last five. The K rate, not super high. The issue here is these numbers are all, you know, combining the away and the home starts. The sp actual splits are starkly, you know, just crazy different. And uh, I got to be a little bit intrigued, even though from a stats point, just looking at his total picture, it doesn't look too great. However, if we look at the splits, the home and away splits, it is much different. And I'm definitely intrigued. Definitely going to uh, have some. Next, David Peterson clearly is in play here at only 6,300 at 2.3x. Uh, he's been pitching well, 3.83 FIP, 4.22 over his last 20. Almost 25% K rate. StatCast data looks okay. He's in a good matchup at only 6,300 and having a 23% combined K rate. I am absolutely intrigued and I am surprised he isn't higher owned. Uh, maybe he does when, you know, all the cards flip, but uh, definitely on board there. Next, Christopher Sanchez. This is another guy with huge home and away splits. Averages 63% less fantasy points away. Uh, Boston, however, versus lefties has been absolutely awful. 28% K rate, 280 uh, Woba, 92 ISO. They have been awful. I think uh, you can absolutely sprinkle in some uh, Chris Sanchez today. His FIP has been great. The only issue with him is the K 
K the K upside. He only has a 22% K rate. We have a 24.6% combined K rate, which is decent. And it's just bringing up the uh, this Boston K rate where they're striking out so much. That is why that combined K rate is decent in this spot. But we have seen those games that he does good. You know, he gets six, seven, eight, ten Ks. So he is possible of getting that elevated K rate when he's really on. So I am intrigued a little bit. Oh, next, uh, Tanner Bybee. Definitely intrigued on Bybee. He is a very uh, good pitcher and has been showing it lately. 2.71 FIP, 26.7% K rate over the last five, 3.28 and a 25.5 K rate over the last 20. Now, his stat cast data is a little scary, especially in Great American Small Park because he's allowing 50% fly balls, but only 27.5% uh, hard contact. He's pitching well. So I am fine with taking some uh, Bybee versus the Reds, who do strike out a lot but are a decent offense. Uh, 165 ISO over the last 20, but a 186 over the last 150. Combined K rate, 26%. I'm intrigued at low ownership. I definitely going to have a little bit. Next, we got Nick Pavetta, 9.3K, 1.9X. Now, it is against the Phillies, and it's June, so you got to worry about Kyle Schwarber. But all in all, uh, I think Pavetta is in a decent spot. I don't mind trying pick, uh, picking on the Phillies a little bit just because of Pavetta's just enormous upside. 3.15 FIP and a 35% K rate over his last five starts. The guy went out with seven innings, 91 pitches, and nine Ks versus Atlanta, 5.1, nine Ks versus Detroit. He uh, can definitely rack up those Ks, be efficient, work deeper into games, and his pitch count is back into the 90s, it, assume, it looks like. So definitely intrigued. 26.6% combined K rate, 9,300 is definitely interesting. Now, we got Cicione, Walker Bueller, Bailey Falter, Braxton Garrett. All of them I'm really not that interested in. Uh, I could sprinkle in a little bit Jose Soriano, just the fact that he is a solid pitcher. Uh, you know, has a FIP in the threes. The K rate is the only issue here. 22% over his last 20 starts, 18.7 over his last five. But stat cast data looks good. The matchup is good. Diamondbacks versus righties are just kind of meh. Even though the Diamondbacks have been hitting a little bit lately. Uh, all in all, uh, definitely a little bit intrigued. But I wouldn't go overboard. Just a sprinkle of him with being low owned. Let's get into FanDuel now. All right. Highest owned on FanDuel. We got David Peterson. That is no surprise to me whatsoever. At only 6,800. The issue with him is he just doesn't have the upside that, say, a Sonny Gray, uh, Bryce Miller, or Bybee have. So if one of these guys goes nuts and goes for, you know, 50 points, Peterson's not going to be able to match it. However, if he is able to get to high 30s, 40, it might not matter just because of the price difference. So I uh, definitely intrigued with Peterson. I do absolutely love Sonny Gray, and I think Bryce Miller may be the pitcher that I have the most of on uh, on FanDuel. Combination of little lower ownership, uh, I think the same or similar upside as Sonny Gray while, when he's at home in a good matchup. So I, uh, I like all three of them. Bryce Miller might be my favorite. Sonny Gray, David Peterson, like them. We'll sprinkle in Bybee. Uh, Definitely going to have some Pavetta or try to have a little bit of him too, just because that upside. I do not want to miss one of those uh, 10K games where he goes six innings and doesn't allow a run. Does it happen today? It is a very, very tough Philly offense. So probably not, but it uh, absolutely is possible. They do have a lot of strikeouts on that roster. He just very much needs to miss that Kyle Schwarber bat right now, which is just on fire. Now, let's go to, over to some stacks. Let's 
Let's have some coffee here. All right. So, highest ceiling, we got Cleveland versus Nick Lodolo. He is a fly ball pitcher, and we're in Cincinnati. That just doesn't generally bode well for Cincinnati pitchers. Also gives that ceiling to Cleveland. Uh, next, we got Dodgers popping up a little bit as well. Um, and with Cleveland, with the ownership being slow, solo, I'm definitely going to have some, uh, even though it's a decent pitcher. Dodgers, not totally sure, sure who they are going against yet, so we don't have a pitcher there, but Dodgers are always in play, and they're hitting the ball well now. Uh, Yankees versus Dan Altavia, he is going to just be an opener. It is going to be a bullpen game, and Casey's bullpen has not been good. So definitely intrigued with some Yankees. Now let's get over to the highest owned stacks, and that is, drumroll, the Cardinals versus Bailey Falter. Falter isn't a great pitcher, so I do understand why Cardinals are getting some love. They're also a cheaper stack, stack so you can get in some uh Higher price pitching if you want. They're okay. I don't love it. I would say Yankees should be the highest owned stack. E or it should be probably KC. Those two teams are going to have very high implied team totals. And I'm intrigued to go there. Angels are popping up against uh, Slade, Cicione. Slade has been very bad lately. So makes some sense there. That Angels offense has some guys that can do some damage as well. So intrigued to go there. And our highest projected is Dodgers and Cleveland, as it probably should be. Both those offenses have just been great all year and in okay matchups here. And the highest value, we got Seattle going against Jonathan Cannon, who Jonathan Cannon has been okay in his short uh, career here. Don't mind picking on him a little bit. So, I mean, 2.4x. I'm going to get some of those Mariners in lineups. Boston versus Sanchez. Sanchez has been very good, but remember, he does have big home and away splits. He's away. Maybe today doesn't go quite as well for him. Texas versus Walker Bueller, I think, is very, very interesting. Absolutely on board with that. Walker Bueller has not been himself. 5.65 FIP over his last five, 4.44 over his last 20. Just not the dominant guy that we are used to. Now, we uh, go to teams here. Highest implied run total, Yankees, 5.9. 0.8 higher than the Royals, who are at 5.1. I really like the Royals spot. I really like the Yankees spot. Dodgers are in a good spot at 4.7. Cardinals, 4.7 versus uh, Bailey Falter. Got to point out that Falter uh, and the Pittsburgh Pirates do not have a good bullpen. Texas bullpen isn't great either. Makes a lot of sense to go to all of these guys. Seattle is also versus uh, the White Sox, who their bullpen is the worst on the slate. And Jonathan Cannon is giving up 33% hard contact. So Seattle definitely makes some sense on paper here. Uh, as far as we go down the list a little bit, I am definitely intrigued with uh, a Cleveland stack. Pavetta is a little bit feast or famine. So Philadelphia is a little interesting and it's a good hit, hitter park. So definitely intrigued there. And then Texas would uh, be the last one. Uh, down here that I'm really interested in and just because we haven't already the highest fit on the slate for the last 20 does go to Cody Poteet versus the Royals allowing a high hard contact rate high average exit velocity it's hot it's uh, wind blowing out in KC very good hitting weather so not too surprised by that good luck guys that'll do it for us today have a good one we will be back tomorrow Let's make some money. Peace.